All right, we are live, and I believe this is episode 15 of Masks of Nyarlath Hotep, and we are joined by uh, Matihi Sim and uh, Slip with, again, uh, Emma listening in, uh, also kind of as the, the voice of dead Frank in Thaddeus's ear <laughs> if she wants to torture him. Um, so, uh, where we left off, uh, in case you didn't watch the last episode, shame on you. Um, there was quite a bit of uh, interesting developments in the basement of Juju House, uh, which you all, except for Frank, managed to uh, get out alive. Um, however, you know you left a couple of at least at least three innocents down there to meet what must have been a terrible fate. You don't know exactly what was going to happen to them, but in your guts you all know it could not possibly have been good. Um, and after passing a couple of uh, somber days, I would say, um, on Tuesday, uh, after you've all taken care of whatever business you needed to take care of, you, uh, you boarded ship. So I have a little intro to play for you. As you check your luggage and prepare to board the RMS Coronia bound for London, England, you reflect back on how significantly your lives have changed. Only a month ago, your concerns were personal. Your futures seemed knowable and perhaps promising. Now you find yourselves embarking on a journey of grim discovery that could very well end in madness or death. New York is behind you, at least for now. You have gotten out with your lives, although the image of Frank barricading the basement door of Juju House in a doomed effort to buy you time to escape will not soon leave your minds. Though you may now know who is responsible for your friend Jackson's death, his killers are still alive and well, and will no doubt continue to destroy the lives of innocents. But for now, you turn your minds ahead to across the sea. The seven-day voyage is, unfortunately, anything but a joyous one. You each tend to keep to your cabins, meeting only to take meals, and the little conversation that occurs at the dinner table has been stilted and awkward. Thaddeus has shown up to dinner drunk on more than one occasion and has failed to appear altogether on two occasions. He broods in his cabin, pouring himself drinks and trying not to think about Frank and his sacrifice, all the while feverishly poring over the Selection de Vivre, which he spent a fortune acquiring. Losing himself in the book provides an escape of sorts, and there's little else that occupies Thaddeus' attention. Natalia has likewise shuttered herself in her cabin, alternating between trying to read through the lengthy and confusing narcotic manuscripts and scribbling down ideas and observations as she goes back over all the physical evidence you've accumulated. Her nights of sleep are troubled and brief, muddled by unsettling dreams and a restless mind. She tries not to think too much about her daughter Svetlana, and find she has little choice but to trust that Thaddeus' arrangements for her safekeeping will be sufficient. Shelley is, of the three of you, the most cheerful, and is the only one who finds time to enjoy a few of the ship's luxurious amenities. Even so, she does not neglect the investigation, finishing up the brief amongst the stones and starting to wade through life as a god. She has moments, especially when lying awake at night and trying to calm her mind for sleep, when she wonders what she is doing here, and experiences a sudden moment of panic in which she plans to board the first ship back to America. But each morning brings a new determination, and her will to follow this thing through to the end and discover whatever lies on the other side of it reasserts itself. As your ship arrives in London, you rejoin one another once more. With silent glances, you disembark and prepare to go through customs, ready to make new discoveries and face new challenges. And there.
there you are. <clears throat> In London on the docks. About to go through customs. So, you, this is sort of the first time apart from the very awkward dinners where really you've showed up at whatever times you wanted and oftentimes miss each other. Um, this is really kind of the first opportunity you've all had to kind of at least more or less soberly <laughs> talk or, or exchange anything really while you're waiting in line through customs. And Natalia looks over in between Thaddeus and Shelley. She's got her luggage, a, kind of a bag in one hand, and, um, another bag in another. She's got this um, very simple off-white outfit on, creases kind of um, steamed out, hair back in ponytail, tight and upwards in the back of her head. She looks to Thaddeus and Shelley, and her eyes are a bit tired, but she's still been standing up straight and looking forward. Uh, so, how was the, uh, trip with the both of you? Shelley is, um, fumbling around in her in her bag with two large trunks at her side looking for her papers trying to make sure everything's in order a little nervous she's never been through customs before um she looks up at natalia's words and uh kind of pats down her hair clutching the papers in one hand um it was it was relaxing <laughs> a good a good change of pace from from New York, I have to say. I did uh, make some progress with those with those books. Uh, I wonder if you had any time to study as well. I did have some time. Yes, no. The book I had in my possession was very dense. Uh, English not being my first language, it uh, makes the read very difficult. It it did look like a very thick and um, ob obtuse sort of a book. I'm, did it make any sense? Mm, it will take quite a while to digest, but I think I got the uh, some interesting information out of it. Not enough yet, but some. Hmm. Well, I, I think that I'm making good progress, but I'm not sure how useful the information I'm getting from this will be. Mm -hmm. She turns to Thaddeus with a little bit of concern, um, noting his somewhat haggard appearance. Um, what about you, Mr. Pepin? Um, were you able to, um, recuperate any on the trip? Well, I got a lot of reading done, but that's really about it. I mean, he's kind of, kind of, look at both of them. A little weary. But yeah, I did learn uh, quite a few things from it. Maybe mm. perhaps we should discuss it once we get out of this looks around place. Yes, this doesn't quite seem the place. <laughs> I'm definitely going to need, I don't know, maybe they have porters here, someone who can help take these, these trunks. I certainly I'd do. Brought uh, do you need me to carry those, Shelly? I can help. Oh, oh the, well, the, you, the you have your own. The spot a rich man a mile off. Um, <laughs> and they come, I mean, as soon as you came in, 
that is, was was um, swamped by porters wanting to take your bags. And when they realize, you know, the three of you are together, they want to take all your bags. And I assume Thaddeus, you allow them. Yeah, yeah, he would, of course, keep an eye on them, not trusting anybody <laughs> at the same time as much as possible. Oh, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll, the, clearly one of them is sort of more senior than the other two, or actually you probably <laughs> need four or five porters, I would guess, between the three of you, maybe six, um, <laughs> and, uh. Yeah. He, the the more senior of them says, um, "Where would you like us to take these for you, sir?" I, I he says, "I can I can get you to the head of the line if you'd like." Ah uh, yes. And he kind of winks at you. And he'll kind of give a little smirk. That would be most helpful. Um, so he says, "Well, of course, right this way, sir. Right this way." And uh, he kind of takes you around the group. Um, and he apparently knows, he, he's recognized by a lot of the customs officials. Um, and they kind of, you know, tip their hats or wave to him. So he clearly is, <laughs> is sort of a fixture here. And he takes you, um, he kind of very adeptly watches for a break in the line at the, near the front. And then he just kind of inserts himself. Um, and uh, and greets the uh, the customs agent and and says, um, this gentleman and and his uh, lady friends are ready to uh, to uh, leave the station here. And he uh, he kind of turns to you and smiles. Yeah, and and you you see his bad teeth, but it's a nice smile nonetheless. Um, there it is when. Walk up, pad his arm. Thank you. And he he uh, he says it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And, and you know his hand is very subtly out. You've you've seen this a million times in your life. Of the <laughs> oh yeah, he would give him yeah. a hefty tip. Yep. All right. And he. Uh <clears throat> so the customs agent asks if you have anything to declare. Um. Thaddeus, of course, thinking would stop and ponder for a minute. Uh, well, I brought three firearms in the trunk. The shotguns. Um. And, okay. And then you'd pull out his Luger, and then I had my personal pistol. The, uh, the customs agent. There, there's a moment of um, surprise, <laughs> clearly, but he recovers quite quickly. And he says, uh, you will be needing a uh, license for that weapon, sir. Ah, yes. I was hoping they get it done as fast as possible, but um, I do understand. He kind of takes a look over your shoulder at the bag that you indicated had the shotguns in it. Make a hard um, uh, credit rating roll for me, or an appearance roll. Your choice. Ooh. Yeah, I wonder which one's going to be better. <laughs> Whichever one. Go with your gut. And, of course, I rolled it out the sheet for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, he just says, we'll have to, uh, you understand, we'll have to take a look in that bag, sir. Ah, uh, yes. And, uh. He, they, they kind of take you off to a side table where they can examine the bag. They open it up, and you are telling the truth. You have three shotguns in there, um, and the uh, the agent the agent very sternly just says to you, you know, you're you're well within your rights to bring the weapons into our fine country as long as your intention is is solely to go hunting. Can you affirm that that is your intent, sir? And that is kind of smirks. Oh, we are hunt we're going to be hunting, all right. Very good, very good, sir. And he says, as for this other weapon, he says, are there any other weapons you need to declare, sir? Yeah, he, he kind of... 
up for himself. He doesn't even hesitate. Nope. That, that would be the, the. This would be the only. Okay. Other Not that me. Natalia or Shelly have any, but they don't even imagine that they would have one. So they just. Um, <laughs> he he just says, "I will." Uh, he says, uh, "You'll have to, of course, apply for a permit." That can take some time," he said. Uh, if you, he points to another agent over, off to the side at a little kiosk. There's a short line there. He says, "If you're, if you go over to that uh, line, sir, and, uh, and uh, obtain a, a application, you can uh, take care of that. It will, will process it." He says, "We'll <sighs> have to keep the weapon for now," and yes. he he, uh, he hands the weapon to a junior. Um, official who walks it over to that area and takes it back inside somewhere. Thaddeus would look over back at uh, Shelly and Natalia and kind of give them a little nod and walk over to the other little line. Okay. Um, Shelly and um, Natalia, would you also make either an appearance check or a hard credit rating roll. I'm stuck. One sec. <laughs> it's still... Oops. I got stuck. <laughs> Oopsies. Um, <laughs> nice stealth roll. <laughs> uh, I, it was okay. I don't think I've got appearance. I'll have to get on my oh, sheet. No. Oh, it, it should Oof. be. It's it's not a skill. It's one of your basic... Oh, basic oh okay. Basic got attributes. it. Ooh. Um, oh. Natalia. Oh. You have not, so, so Shelly, they, they don't even give you a second look as far as wanting to look in your bags. Um, so you're fine. Um, Natalia, you actually seem to have attracted the attention of a, of an officer who's smiling at you, um, and asking more questions than are needed but you know he's asking what you you know what you plan to do if you if you know what sites you're going to see if you need any recommendations he'd be happy to give them to you etc etc but uh and and in fact he kind of goes through he he says i'm afraid i will have to look at your bags ma'am uh but uh he says i'm sure it'll be fine and he just kind of starts going through your bags, but he's, you can tell he's not really looking. He's just using it as an excuse to, to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. And Natalia will indulge him, um, you know, asking about sites and everything for her to go see and such. And she's never been to this part of the world before and all that. Ah, uh, indeed. Well... He says, you will absolutely um, have to make sure to go to the World Fair. At the World Fair? Um, where is it exactly? Oh, it's right here, uh, right outside of London. And he kind of, uh, he gives you some directions. He says it's uh, not to be missed. Ah, well, I look forward to going there as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, yeah, and then he, he holds up one of your undergarments and you can see him kind of, and he's kind of holding them up over you to sort of imagine, no, I'm just kidding. Um, he, he just kind of goes through your stuff and, and, and then closes it all back up again and, and he says, I'm terribly, terribly sorry, um, to have to have gone through your things, but, uh, but it was lovely to have, uh, it, it was lovely to speak to you and I hope you have a wonderful time in our city. Uh, of course, thank you very much. It was lovely to meet you. Okay. Thaddeus, you do have to wait in line for a little bit, and then there's an application for you to fill out, which includes an address that you can be reached at. Um, you do know that Mabel arranged for a hotel room for you under whatever name you wanted. Um, so you could give that address. If you uh, yes. So choose. All right. Um, and, you know, there are statements you have to agree that you're only, you, you know, bringing it in for personal protection, that you, uh, you will not, you'll not discharge it, um, except in cases of self-defense within the United Kingdom. 
He would wholeheartedly agree and sign it. All right. <clears throat> and, uh, okay. It takes a little while, a little, little irritating. Um, he is sure you have to pay a, a, a fee to have it done. Um, I assume you're just going to pay the straight fee. Um, Unless there's an expediting fee. It doesn't say anything about that. <laughs> that is would of course is there is that a way to is there a feed for getting this done faster than <clears throat> um you can attempt a credit rating check for me it shouldn't be hard yeah you think so Why did I lose it? Oh my. Um, he says, um, for you, sir, I believe we can uh, fast track this for you. Um, he that said, would be especially much Especially since you were so forthright in presenting it. Um, yes. And uh, so, yes, he, he takes out another stamp from under there. Um, that's you believe says expedited on it and stamps the, the thing and then kind of puts it over in a, uh, a stack and then wishes you a good day and your your passports are all stamped with an entrance to England and then you find yourself outside with the porters standing behind you with all your stuff uh, where will we be staying There is a hotel. Yes. A there. wonderful hotel. Uh -huh. A wonderful hotel. The Ritz or the Savoy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Where is the Ritz? Hmm. Unfortunately, that's not on my map. I thought it would be. Um, yeah, there's a... a the Ritz or the Savoy sounds good. What, what would you prefer? And I'll find out where it is. That is. Oh, uh, um, what the, <laughs> the Ritz sounds fine. All right. Okay, so, um, yes, you can easily get a taxi. There are plenty of taxis outside. Um, and, um, so, you give them the address, head through the city streets, and in no time you are there. Uh, it takes very little time to get you ensconced in your room um, you pass some some lovely London scenes um, one thing that's a little maybe different than what you're used to um, there's definitely some motor cars but in London there's not as many certainly as in New York um, there are still a lot of carriages <coughs> Um, and people walking. Um, in, in fact, uh, you could have taken a handsome cab if you had preferred, but there are motor car taxis, which you probably would prefer for speed right now. I'm imagining you just want to get to your hotel. Um, and eventually you do, and you all have very well-appointed rooms, very spacious And uh, so, essentially, about two hours after your arrival, you are finally in your rooms. And it's now about mm, five in the afternoon. Mm. As they arrive through the Ritz, um, I'm going to get upstairs. 
That's how you look over the other two. Maybe we should drop everything off and then have dinner. We can talk, maybe. Um, maybe, uh, to go to Thaddeus. Maybe sober this time. Oh. Well, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Besides, I don't think I have very much in my supply left. Man, we can always restock it later, Thaddeus. Yes. Hmm. Well, the, the hotel looked like it had a, a nice dining area, a restaurant downstairs. Next. Perfect. Well, then let's freshen up and move down there. Excellent. I thought it was an after room. There is, of course, where he's freshening up and drink some of his remaining whiskey. Okay, that sounds okay. good. Yeah, Shelly will actually probably spend some time, put on a much nicer dress and make herself up. She's noticed a lot of the people here at this hotel are quite wealthy and <laughs> yeah. she looks like a bit of a peasant, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it's also a little subtle. I mean, this, not sure. everyone here is English, but there are a lot of English people here, and you notice that their style of dress, while you can tell it's high quality, it's not flashy. Um, in New York, a lot of people have quite flashy outfits, and here it seems quite a bit more understated. Um, Fewer flappers. Yes, yes. Tally just doesn't really care too much about dress. She just goes back down. <laughs> Where's her wife beaters? Yeah. <laughs> She's got, you know, her notebook and everything yeah. and hair still tied up, but yeah. outfits pressed, but nothing fancy. That is, of course, would freshen up drinking the whiskey and Try to tuck in his clothes, not changing, but trying to look a little less haggard. Mm -hmm. And then head down. Okay. I'm assuming Shelly's probably the last one down then. Mm. Natalia's probably the first one. <laughs> yeah. And she'll come down the stairs wearing something that she was probably saving for a night out, but now feels so self-conscious that she put it on now. And um, she also is bringing her, her journal. Okay. And tell you sitting in your chair, legs crossed, got a like, glass of vodka at this point. Kind of sitting there going over her own notes. Waiting for the other two. When they finally arrive, probably Thaddeus first. Maybe a bit of awkward silence between the two. Yeah, Thaddeus would definitely order a uh, drink. Nice scotch. Um, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long, Shelley says. Um, slipping into a seat. No, no, yeah. You're fine, Shelly. Thaddeus would look over at Shelly. Ah, very nicely dressed, I see. Ah, thank you. Um, I don't think I've ever been anywhere quite this upscale. Thaddeus kind of look around. Yes, yeah, it definitely is a very nice place. Yes, I think that is a slightly understated. It is very lovely here indeed. So I look over at Shelly. I think that you packed a little bit more um, fancy than I did. <laughs> well, really, I only have one or two like this, but... Well, you know... 
how many opportunities am I going to have to actually wear it? Mm. True. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And he looks at Natalia. Well, if you're without one, then maybe we should remedy the dead if we get a chance. <laughs> I will smile a little bit. I never have been a woman for uh, luxurious outfits. Uh, many do not suit my um, height. Ah. Uh, well, Shelly we... looks... I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure there we'll find something. I'm sure you would make a quite a striking figure, actually. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. No, um, I think these uh, English people are fairly tiny. She kind of looks around a bit. <laughs> Perhaps that's why you caught the attention of the, the uh, customs master <laughs> over at the dock. And Tayo blush a little bit. Uh, m maybe, uh, uh, maybe just a uh, curiosity um, for um, taller women, I, I guess. More exotic or something. Mm, he did seem quite curious. Spent quite a lot of time in your trunk. <laughs> yes, I, I I do not know exactly what he was looking for. Makes me slightly uh, concerned. I must double check if everything's still there. As you guys are having a conversation, Daddy is going to order another scotch. They are happy to oblige. Uh, Shelley will order some wine, and. Um, as they're drinking, she'll... So... Uh, who first? I'm telling you, I'll look to Thaddeus. To Shelly. Not... Oh, I'm not one of you two. Well, alright then. I, Like I said, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how helpful this will be. Um, in the, the smaller volume amongst the stones that was a book of poetry which I can't say that I'm um, a poetry expert normally but even were I more familiar and well read I don't think I would be very fond of this poetry uh, here I'll, I'll share a sample verse uh, they lumber through the night with their elephantine tread I shudder in a fright as I cower in my bed. They lift colossal wings on the high gable roofs, which tremble to the trample of their mastodonic hoofs. That's from Out of the Old Land, uh, a poem. Um, a lot of these poems seem to hint at old gods. Uh, and I'm not really... I'm, Pressed with the the writing itself, um, it definitely gives the impression that the man, um, what was his name? Oh, Justin Jeffrey was mm, a bit disturbed. Um, I guess the the theme from of this poetry would be that. Humanity is just a temporary master of the earth and that lurking on the edge, there's a greater truth that these sleeping gods will arise and destroy us all. <clears throat> I, um, they refer to a monolith uh, in, in several of the poems and I think that is perhaps the, the greatest of these gods that he seems obsessed with. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's poetry. There's nothing very concrete here, just hints and, and shadows of his obsessions. Uh, the life as a god was longer and a little more interesting. Um, it was a man from his journey to Egypt in 1805, so that seems to mirror some of the, some of the things that were in those notes that you were showing us, Natalia, um, 
but earlier. And this was English artist Crompton. And he journeyed to Egypt as part of the army and was injured and ended up joining a cult. Cult of the Black Pharaoh. Uh, which, uh, what, what did they... Oh yes, they called him Nivrin Ka. And he witnessed and participated in a lot of unsavory acts. Torture, murder, uh, rape. <clears throat> it, um, yeah, it just wasn't really pleasant reading. Uh, he <laughs> composed most of this from an asylum here in England. Um, he did return to England and somehow managed to find a branch of that same cult here. Um, there are some details of rituals. I haven't, I haven't completely, you know, this, it's really more difficult to read than you would think because he, his writing becomes less intelligible as the book continues. You know, it's hard to, to piece it together into something that makes sense. But, um, the new moon is particularly sacred to him. It's the face of the Pharaoh of Darkness watching over the world. Uh, a lot of other hedonistic rites, um, monthly human sacrifice, descriptions of fearful beasts like bat horses with, you know, demonic wings and other winged serpents and other things that really even he has a difficulty describing but are stomach turning. Uh, the symbols of the cults include an inverted onk and a, a spiked club which he describes as being used in these sacrificial rituals. Uh, sometimes he says nephrin ka instead of nivrin ka. I suppose as a translation from an, another alphabet there would be alternate spellings. Uh, mm, he appears to have consumed a lot of opium in his attempt to connect with his new god. And so that is my theme here. He seems to think that this god could make him whole and pure in his service. Mm. Really, much, much of what I've read is just details of these sacrificial rituals. Perhaps that's why I'm having such a hard time getting through it. I, I keep having to put it down and <clears throat> refresh my mind. And at this point, Natalia, especially mentioning kind of the... Pretty much of the mention of um, the cult in her readings, Natalia has really leaned into the table very much dead set focused on Shelly and her eyes are a bit wide as she you know, describes the text of the book and afterwards she pushes back slightly in her chair putting a hand on her chin looking down tapping the side of her face with her finger <sighs> this doesn't specify exactly what the the, the the cult is called here in England. When when exactly was this written? Um, let's see. His his journey to Egypt was in 1805, and so I think it continues from then. I'm I'm not exactly sure of the dates, but I would assume you know. Does it specify five where five and twenty years? I don't know how long he lived. Um, he, they call it the Brotherhood of the Black Pharaoh, and what, what, what was the other one? And she looks through her... Bloody tongues? Uh, no, they don't say anything about that. Uh, Servant of the Pharaoh of Shadows. It's, it, it's so graphic. Even I started having a, some vivid dreams from his descriptions. What kind of dreams? Nothing. No, Shelley. Uh, this well, is... Shelly, it's not nothing. Trust oh. me. I just, what, you know, what my imagination would come up with after having read such graphic descriptions, I, 
I, I dreamed that I saw this pharaoh. It was a, a mummy, of course, you know, after those penny dreadful stories. And uh, another woman was there. I don't. I didn't recognize her, but she was exclaiming, "Oh, the black pharaoh! He's real!" Um, and that was that was it. I think I woke up soon after. You know, dreams are they're quite fleeting once you once you wake. Did you have any other dreams after reading that? Was that it? And Natalia looks very very serious at this point, just staring directly into Shelley's eyes. Not not that I recall, Natalia. I tend to be a, a deep sleeper. Mm. Um, I like to see this book, if possible. Uh, of course, I'd I'd like to um, try to finish, but you're welcome to it. And I'm I'm completely done with the book of poetry. I really have no desire to read it ever again. Mm, I probably will read that. This one. <clears throat> It is very much this, the, the, the pharaoh cult, um, the symbols of the Ankh, it's very reminiscent of what Roger Carlyle had dreams of, what he saw. Yes, I, I too thought that there were some common themes. I wonder if they ran into the same cult in their travels, although there's definitely... Uh quite a bit of time that's passed since this, this... Most likely the same cults. Most likely the same thing. Reaching out to them, this, this opium. It is similar to what Augustus Larkin took. And she'll look over to Thaddeus. I think he was trying to get in touch with it too. If opium is the way to get close, or at least the way they believe. Her eyes kind of slightly light up a little. She leans back in her chair. Ah. Uh, yes. That could be. I do <laughs> She kind of slams the table a little bit. Could be. <sighs> Based on all that we see at this point, I don't think could be is that the question is. I don't think could be is in our real house. I think is is in our real house. Well, you got to remember that he was not happy. He ended up. And he's going to hesitate and look over at Shalala. He ended up helping us in the end, so maybe the opium was a way to cope. I don't think it was a way to cope. He wanted... He wants us to tear out the gold in that fucking pyramid that he is. He... He knew what was going on. Well, if you remember, he ended up telling us to put it back. It was really... He's gonna look over at Shelly again. It is really the other one. Mendoza. Yes. He was the one that wanted us to take the gold. To unleash what I saw. I still don't know what exactly you saw was. I still remember it as it was this yesterday. Then he's gonna take another big old slug of his drink and hold it up, you know. Oh yes. <laughs> and they very quickly refill you. Yes. But like I said, the opium could have been a way for him to cope. I mean in the end mm. he ended up Disobeying Mendoza. Maybe he had some moment of clarity, but he is the one that pushed to go to the pyramid. He's the one who wanted to go. 
It was his expedition. Yeah, that is true. I caught him a few times. I've seen the needles. And if this this book that Shelley talks about, that you talk about, she'll cover the Shelley and bit with intensity. If, if this person is to be believed that he's been using drugs to get in touch with the, the, the Pharaoh, which I am very much thinking is this Nihilathotep that has been in Roger Carlyle's notes. That apparently has many names according to the fucking cult that we ran into. I should kind of look around that part in my language. Um, it's based on what I read. This is I, this has been going on for a long, long time. Talking about the Byzantine Empire, the the necotic manuscripts translated from some sort of uh, anatotic scroll, I think it was. I'm gonna take out her notes and flip through them very hastily. Um, her notes, of course, getting a bit messier as they go. Um, landing on some of the last pages, um, with writing on it at least. She has to flip back a few times. Uh, it, it, it talks about um, the fall of the uh, elder ones, um, and, and civilization relates um, that fragments uh, of the great cities persist. Um, just kind of scrolling through and reading them. Uh, it mentions rituals. In these texts, rituals, um, unspecified sacrifices, um, aiding them um, in transcribing uh, most of the portions of the ancient um, Nadotica. Um, I think the the rituals that you talk about, the rituals that have been on the those moon those moon phases, I think it ties into this and why they did it. I think they were trying to translate something or trying to maybe understand something that this 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 pharaoh that's been reaching out this nihilathotep she kind of keeps her voice down when she says that is he's definitely reaching out and it's been going on for a very very long time <sighs> centuries i think well, from the looks of things that we have seen, it's in the pyramid, and I mean, even from what we glanced over, it's the Juju house. And they just kind of like kind of down on his glass and look up. <sighs> Ages. Even in the book I read, it, talking about Hyperborea. <laughs> And you kind of get a little chuckle. What the hell's Hyperborea? I don't... It does not sound familiar. Hyperborea? What was it in reference to? Just a... Just a land, you know? It's... it's I... Ancient. Yes. Borea, boreal has to do with trees and plants. So, hyperborea, maybe a place of extreme green in life? Maybe, maybe some sort of forest. Oh! And she'll kind of be flicking through her notes. Uh, it says in mine as well, it mentions the name. Issues like Hyperborea. Mm hmm. That's what it seems like, yes. Perhaps just a description of some sort of, you know, utopian afterlife, a, a, a garden, you know, a, 
beautiful green heaven type place. More like a kind of a biblical aspect almost. Maybe. It does seem reminiscent. No. Well, that's one of those things that we should probably look into. Yes. Yeah. Apparently it was... And, and... And it kind of stops and... and apparently it's... The place that an ancient sorcerer was living or been to. Which is, I would think, unfathomable in most aspects, but now it's, it's really not. How, how long ago is that text, the original translation, what, what's the, what's, how old are those writings? Well, it's... <laughs> Uh, 13th century, maybe? That's what I read. I don't know if that's the... You know, I think that might be... You know, the, a translation from an original. Oh my. Could all of this really go back so far? I think so. Well, the temple we were at... And, Peru was any indication, but I would most definitely think so. I had been assuming that all of this was a cult that had been trying to bring back old beliefs from from long ago, that it wasn't necessarily a continuation of the same religion. <sighs> mm. Well, it, it could make sense if everything is connected. That well, people get interested in the weirdest things, and it spreads like wildfire sometimes. Maybe. At some point, to get around some dogma. <laughs> I don't think it's just something spreading like wildfire. I don't think it's just simply an idea. It's, it's something else. Something that can touch people while they sleep in their dreams when they're most vulnerable. It's not just some general idea, some sort of god. It is. What else can be able to invade your mind like that, to be able to invade so many? I don't know. I just don't want to jump to any conclusions. There are master mesmerists in this world who have techniques for implanting all sorts of ideas and notions in people's minds. I... Perhaps these cultists have had techniques handed down to them. I, I don't want to, to dismiss anything at this point. Yeah, well, that is correct, and we should look at all the possibilities, but just going back to from what I saw, and, and again from what I saw in the in the house, that cloud of energy, so to speak, and he's going to look at his empty glass and raise it up again. That energy that turned... Ford Benjamin's wife into an old lady. There's yes. more, more at play than mesmerizing. 
My arms still have not fully recovered, and she'll kind of pull up her shirt slightly, and her arms have... Um... It looks like they have, like, somewhat age spots almost on them. And kind of flex here and there. Um... Her forearms are kind of darker than the rest of her skin tone. Yeah, there are spots that are drier than other parts mm. of your skin. <clears throat> yes, and we, we can't discount that. That's something that we've seen firsthand now. Ooh. What exactly it was, considering that it was used as eyes as the weapon of some sort. None that I ever heard or seen of. I, I have to admit, if I hadn't seen that, I would have dismissed all of this as fantasy and ravings and, frankly, Madness. the power of suggestion. But that that was a very uh, convincing experience. Uh, obviously, these cultists have tapped into some sort of power, the nature of which I I'm not willing to to speculate at this point, but. That is real. Definitely yeah. was. Indeed. Everything we have seen is real from the basement of Juju House to the pyramid of the Peru and what I've seen inside there and the energy mass. Like, we have reached beyond the tomfoolery of mesmerization in this that is somehow a power which at this point I can't say it is not the waiter comes to ask if you would like dessert and Tani just you know, finishes off her drink and shakes her head mm. Just another beverage, thank you. Yes, yes, I'll take another one. scotch. Very good. They start clearing the table and bring you after dinner drinks then. Zaya closes her journal. So. Uh, hmm? I'm sorry, continue. No, that's fine. Go ahead, Shelley. I was just wondering how long we plan to be in London and if we plan to do anything while we're here or if this is just a stop on the way. Are we going to try to track down anyone from the Carlisle expedition? Yes. I, I for one, would like to know more about this Penhew Foundation. Who's connected it over here? Well, regarding the Penny Foundation, it is... I will have to go back through my notes to find out exactly who, but... It was... Um, Mr. Penny, the original um, founder, I think, um, that contacted Roger Carlyle about the expedition. That he never... Roger never said anything to anyone about expressing his desire to go to Egypt um, or Kenya for that matter um, but somehow Mr. Penya found out reached out to Roger but off they went and he's bound to have some type of family or somebody that knows him somewhere still around indeed and from what I skimmed of those notes, it sounded like there might be some surviving, hiding members of the expedition. Perhaps he could give us some leads on that. Maybe. Yes. I do believe that was in Shanghai, but... There's at least one in Shanghai. Uh, 
I have to go back through my notes to figure out exactly what, but I think the Benio Foundation is our first stop. So we should be wary if that the book points over to Shelley is correct. There could still be a operating cult here. Her eyes go wide. She hadn't considered that possibility. Oh, here I was thinking that we'd left that behind us in New York. <laughs> this cult is... Again, I am taking everything that Jackson has said or his word. It's everywhere, Shelley. There's... No way that we're escaping it. There are members in every crack, every crevice, and every city that we are going to go into. That's why he's asked us to find out exactly what it is. Well, a concierge at a place like this, they tend to be experts on the city. If we present the hotel with information, they might be able to give us a, a lead, uh, some address or some contact to the Penhu Foundation. Maybe we just need to be careful. There's going to be at least some people on the inside. Hopefully not some concierge. Of course. We will have to ask someone something at some point, though. Ah, uh, yes, but we have to be mindful. <sighs> Who knows how far this cult reaches? I, I, any information I left about when we left and timelines and everything is skewed, but eventually they'll be able to catch up. I think they're... Hmm. She goes, opens her notes again, flipping through. She pulls out Jackson's letter, pulling it out, flipping it to the back, pointing to the top. I think they're trying to open some sort of gate. I don't okay. know if they're going to be chasing us. A gate, you say? That's what Jackson said. Hmm. I assume you mean a, a figurative gate. Something to do with these elder gods. Maybe. <sighs> At this point, I... It is... Hard to tell exactly... What is real anymore. You understand? It's... Confusing. No, well, that I do understand. He's gonna look down at his empty glass and raise it up again. Thaddeus, I think that's enough. <sighs> if only that was true. Oh, waiter comes and uh, and refills you. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I should start ordering bottles. Would mm -hmm. that be a little crass? Natalia will put her hand over Thaddeus's glass. I know you are hurting. I think we all are. But if we are to figure out exactly what this is, we can't be drunk the whole time, Thaddeus. 
It's not... <laughs> it's not the way to go about this. <sighs> I'm not trying to be drunk the whole time. Just the times that it doesn't matter. You think this doesn't matter? All of that means I do think this matters. Which is why I need this drink even more. Your words make no sense. <laughs> you kind of smirk. Natalia's just glaring at him at this point. She gets up from her seat, taking the last drink of her glass. Well, I am going to continue to ponder over these notes. If you continue drinking, Thaddeus, you will be hung over in the morning before we attempt to go to the Penhue Foundation. And you will be almost useless. So I hope you keep that in mind. I have to drink as he's talking and kind of stop and look at the glass. <sighs> yes, perhaps you're right. Of course I am. Shelly smiles. You're lucky to have a friend like Natalia, someone who isn't afraid to speak her mind. Uh, well, the unfortunate things about friends is that they end up dying. Mm. Kind of put a glass with a little toes and take a big swig. And nothing seems to change that. Die's face will fall a bit. <sighs> well, all we can do is do our best from here on out. Or. Jackson, and Frank, and Helen. It's all we can do, Thaddeus. Even There's... in... What? Even in the most mundane circumstances, life is unpredictable. All you can do is make the most with what you're given. Maybe not um, create a situation where you're looking back and wishing that you had done more with your days than that. And she taps his glass. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I have no doubt that you're correct on that. Oh, what a lucky fellow. You have two <clears throat> women clucking over you and <laughs> trying to curb your vices. Most men only get one. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the head waiter seems to sense that <clears throat> that you're coming to an end and, and the check uh, sort of mysteriously appears next to you. <clears throat> and that is will pick it up and uh, yes, indeed. And he's kind of kind of hold it away from his face a little bit and back at his face. I, I do believe we have a we were able to put it on the room tab. Is that correct? Of course. Uh, well, that is what it will do. All right. Easy enough. That's quick. Well, um, shall we meet here for breakfast tomorrow and um, discuss where we're headed? Ah, indeed. Bright and early, right? Mm, you mean 11 a.m.? <laughs> shall we laugh? My thoughts exactly. Well, that is bright. It, it may be kind of early for some of us. I will be up at six like usual. 
Are you gonna go for the one? Mm. Yes. It is. Mm. It pauses for a second. Never mind. Uh, you two have a good night. And she'll take her notes with her and head back up to her room. Okay. Um, as Shelly mentioned, uh, there is a concierge um, that is on duty. You're not sure how late he is on, but it is now 8 o'clock or later, and a little after 8, and he is still there if any of you want to approach him or not. Natalia is just going to go straight up to her room to go over some of her notes. Okay. Not really trusting the whole concierge. They is, of course, to try to convince Shelly to have more drinks with them. <laughs> uh, she'll sit around uh, for a, uh, maybe another drink, try to persuade him to, to come back to his room. Um... And while we're here, I do believe that we should try to make time for something pleasant. It's no wonder that everyone's having bad dreams with all this horrible things that have been going on. I think, I think we need to balance it at some point with something that's not quite so dire and serious. Oh, no. what do you have in mind? Well, look around you. We're in one of the greatest cities in the world, and as we were at the customs, the, the gentleman who was giving Natalia so much attention mentioned that the World Fair was yeah, here. Actually, I'm sorry. It was, that, was, that was... I misspoke. It's the British Empire <laughs> Exhibition. Ah, uh, right. I think the World Fair is in St. Louis. Actually, at oh, this time, I believe it's in Paris. Okay. Um, so, but there is the British Empire ex 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 Exhibition, which is ah, basically... She corrects yes, herself, then. All, ev <laughs> oh. Everywhere the British Empire is, there is a display and gardens and things like that to look at from all around the Empire. Well, that sounds like a an excellent idea. It would be good to kind of take minds off things, right? As I said, I think... I think you do. Everyone's mind needs a rest from this kind of pressure. I find that when I get too involved in a project, it really helps to... to not think of it at all for a time. <sighs> there you go take the last little drink of his drink. Excellent. Well, that is maybe what we shall do tomorrow. Maybe after this Penn Hume Foundation stuff is over and we can figure out where we need to go next, we can take a little detour. Well, that sounds like an excellent plan. And she uh, stands up and sort of puts a hand around his elbow with a just a little tug that <laughs> 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 is catching you know he's feeling a little drunk and uh, yes would Maybe. you mind uh, accompanying me back to my room I'm I'm not used to drinking like this and I'm feeling a little tips oh, indeed and and he, he's he's gonna slowly, steadily try to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking he's doing a better job than what he's actually doing. Yes, and very gallantly helping Shelly uh, to yeah. along, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. He held his arm out and well then. And kind of look around. Yes, I do believe it's this way. <laughs> oh, I'm quite lost myself. Um. <laughs> she rolls her eyes where he can't see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If necessary, I'm sure we can ask someone for directions. <laughs> yes. I think 
There's the concierge over there. Ah, uh, well, yeah. No need to bother. I think we know where we're going. He kind of start going towards uh the general direction of the rooms. Mm -hmm. All right. There's an elevator man to take you up. Excellent. I do enjoy an elevator ride. <laughs> mm-hmm. This never quite loses its um, novelty. Makes me feel like a, a little girl. Yes. I always wanted to play in the elevators. Yes, and go to different floors and traverse all around. So he, he I'm, I'm assuming he took us through the floor we oh, needed yeah. to go to. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Yes, you're on the third floor. All right, uh, you make it back to your rooms. Well, thank you, Thaddeus, for walking me back to my room. It was the least I can do. Make sure you got back to your room safe. And you kind of do a little bow. <laughs> I do She's thank you. Just <laughs> grinning at this point. Yeah. Um. His, his bow, he has no idea, but his bow is incredibly awkward and he almost tips over. <laughs> How gallant. Uh, I shall see you tomorrow. Yes, bright and early. And he'll start attempting to make his way back to his room. Right. Shelly will watch him go and make sure he tries to go in the right room. Um, yeah. Make a make an intelligence check for me oh, there. Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. We going the wrong way, homie. <laughs> we... Wrong room. Oh, no, no you, you actually... Um, you go right to your room. Wow. <laughs> you, you have a little trouble with the key getting in the door, but you found the right room, and uh, eventually you fumble your way in. And, uh, awesome. And from there, who knows? Enters. Right. Uh, Shelly will go to sleep. Okay. Um, an uneventful night. Although you all would know better than I. <laughs> but, but nothing from the outside intrudes on your sleep. Um, Natalia, I assume you wake early to go running. Yes, like usual. I'm assuming sleep was mm -hmm. as usual. The concierge is at his post. Hmm. <laughs> she can walk right by, but he does offer a he actually rather solicitously says, you know, are you are you planning to uh, go for a stroll, madam? Uh, uh bah, yes, I plan on um, doing a bit of uh, exercise. Um, he says, quite excellent. I think you'll find the park uh, right around the corner to be an excellent place to for your morning constitutional. And he points off to the left down the street. Perfect. Um, before I uh, go, I do not know if you not too much. Um, I hope I don't know too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hope just uh, the right amount. Well, hopefully it is exactly the right amount. Um, if you know anything about um, the the Penhue Foundation at all. I, I know of it. I can't say that I've ever been inside, but I 
he uh, he points off a little bit to the right there. He said, it's uh, actually within walking distance, I should say, perhaps 15 or 20 minutes if you're up for a stroll. Um, hmm. What do you know about this? Well, I know it's on Devonshire Street. Uh, it's a high Victorian era building, so fairly recent construction, very impressive. I've got a look at it from the outside. Um, quite nice. So apparently a private foundation, a members only kind of deal. Um, but I understand it's not very expensive to get a membership. So uh, it's an e it's, its focus is Egyptology. Which yes, <laughs> I said I have heard. many Londoners are very Egypt mad. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, is that the, I'm guessing that is a common theme? Well, probably more common than in any other great city on earth, I would, I would imagine. We do enjoy mm. our uh, ancient cultures, and Egypt seems to be at the top of that list, mm. at least in recent years. Oh. Is there any maybe interesting um, museums, shops, anything like that for any... Egyptian-based items. I'm a bit of a... My, my employer is a bit of a fan. Uh, he says, well, I, I don't know if they have a gift shop. So I'm afraid I can't tell you. I, as, I've never... In general. In general, well, certainly the British Museum, which is merely a half a block away, um, certainly has a very fine gift shop, and I, I believe they ought to have some Egyptian trinkets. Mm. Fabulous. I will have to inquire with you a few more things in the future, but, um, uh, your name? I am, my, uh, my name is Michael. Ah, thank you, Michael. Um, Natalia. He, uh, he says I'm here for your service anytime you need me. Mm, perfect. I might need you in the future. For now, I will, um, vacate. I don't know if that she kind of waves. She and... says, enjoy your stroll. Thank you. She'll go on her run. Okay. Do you go to the left as he suggested? Yeah, just kind of casually jogging by. There is a lovely park. Just, I mean, it's, it's right around the corner from the hotel. Um called Green Park and it is uh, a very popular place for people to walk. You are the only one jogging. <laughs> Everyone else is walking with their dogs or their prams or uh, or their lady or male friends. Uh, this early? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> it, uh, let's see, today would be a Tuesday, so it is a it is a working day for some, for those unfortunate enough to have to work. <laughs> yeah, she'll kind of observe as she jogs by. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a pleasant enough morning, um, and it is not raining, which is nice. So you see Fabulous. that most people carry umbrellas with them, not open at present. Yeah, eventually she'll head back. Okay. All the way after quite a bit. Right. Before she gets up to her room, she'll speak to Michael, the concierge mm -hmm. again. I, uh, I trust you had a pleasant walk. You, he says, you're lucky today. It's the sun is shining. Uh, yes, uh, very nice out. Um, uh, oh no, question. Um, where is the uh, the the nearest library? Hmm. He uh, he says a a learned foreigner. I'm <laughs> yes. He says, well, there is, let's see, I'm looking here. Gallery. 
The London Library. Oh, good heavens, the London Library. Well, he would know right away then, actually. The, the London Library is literally five minutes away. Ah, oh, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, he says, I have a map I can give you. And, uh, yes, that would be absolutely and fantastic. And he points out that with the you are here, um, that little pin <laughs> is the hotel. That's the Ritz. Mm. 31 is the um, London Library. Uh, 9 over here is the Penhue Foundation that he pointed out. And 7 is the British Museum. And there is the mm. park that you went to. Perfect. So I'm going to look at it before I'm wiping off her forehead and again waving to Michael. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, not at all. And I can actually give you your own little copy of that. Woo! Perfect. Yeah, with that she'll head back up to her room and get ready for the day. Maybe continue to read a bit before heading back down at um, 10. Okay. Yay, dead Frank. Yay! He tries to pick it up, though, and his hands just pass right through it. Passes right through oh, the no. door. All right. So, um, you are all, I assume, going to gather for some breakfast and to discuss your plans. I uh, think should probably show up after breakfast. <laughs> all right. Yeah, and Natalia will be there around um, 10 o'clock, just eating, you know, not too much, but keeping an eye out for Thaddeus. Not really expecting him, mostly keeping an eye out for Shelly. Okay. Okay. Right, she'll, she'll come down and um, meet up with Natalia, probably far before Thaddeus speaks. But on her way out... She is going to pass Thaddeus's door and bang on it three times and then <laughs> head back downstairs. It's like herding cats. Thaddeus, of course, hearing the bang, is kind of wake up and find himself on the floor and get up and tuck his clothes in and Oh, I think I'm late. And immediately head downstairs. This this can hear as possible, I'm sure. Okay. And Natalia, I guess I'm probably reading the paper. And if Thaddeus eventually stumbles down in a half tucked in outfit, still smelling a bit like booze and hair all messed up, she'll just kind of give him a look up and down and continue drinking water and reading. Good morning. I trust you haven't waited long. Mm. No. I trust you haven't changed from last night. Daddy's yeah, kind of like down. Yeah. You are correct. Right? Do you need us to help dress you? Ah. <sighs> Well, if I didn't wake up late, I would have had time to change, but I can't think of a hard time before we head out. I think it might be proper to at least uh, change into something nicer smelling and maybe uh, freshen up before we head to the Penny Foundation. It is a very upscale place as far as information says. and. You look, um, looks to Shelly. How do I put this? Um, a bit unkempt. Um, yes. yes, we, we want to make the best possible impression, I think. Um, let that, um, reputation of yours open whatever doors it can. And she pushes a, a cup in front of Thaddeus. I asked for coffee, and they gave me the strangest look. Apparently, tea is 
what you'll get. <laughs> Tea. And Dez can kind of smell it. Well, you know, it makes tea better. A little bit, you know, reach inside. A little bit to hair of the dog. You know, pour a little bit in. Close his flask up, put it in his jacket. Shelly just looks at Natalia and shakes her head. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, I guess we'll have to take care of you while we're here. Uh, I'll be right as a rain. Shortly mm -hmm. enough. Sure. So, um, we know where the Penhue Foundation is, then? Or is that something we need to ask about? Oh, no, I, um, she pulls out the map that she got and lays it on the table. No, I, uh, actually acquired the map from that, um... What is the, uh, the, the gentleman, the, I forgot the English oh, word for it. Uh, the concierge. Yes. Actually, I think it's a French word. Um, yes, oh, well, that's, that's excellent. How, um, lovely for you to be so prepared. You are an early ride. Yes, uh, the park was very nice, and she'll, I'll start pointing out a few places. So this is the, this is the park. Very, very nice. And here's the Penu Foundation. There is the museum. Apparently, in the last few years, um, many people um, in England have gotten onto the. Uh, gotten very obsessed with um, Egyptology. Oh, you know, I, I had suggested to Thaddeus that we go see that British Expo while we're here. I wonder. There might be some Egyptologists there. The British Empire definitely has extended into Egypt. Ah, yes. For one, to take our minds off of things, but two, who knows what we may find there. Yes, it would be nice. I, I understand that with the Penu Foundation, there does need to be... There is a membership, apparently. Oh... We need to be members to get inside. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, apparently, the membership is, according to the concierge, not very pricey, not very expensive. I don't know what his gauge for that is. Is the only thing. <sighs> well, maybe it'd be cheaper than these books. Hopefully. I should hope so. Well, either way, a membership, membership we shall have, and he'll kind of smirk. Well, this then. Is mighty good tea, by the way, if we haven't had any. <laughs> I think yours might be a little different from mine, but it was good enough. Um, well, I'll leave you to your breakfast. I'm going to go get a head start on getting ready, it sounds like. Again, we need to make a certain kind of impression. Um, Natalia, if you, we, we aren't the same size, but I might have um, a dressier skirt. It would be a little shorter on you, but I think we'd be the same around the waist. Uh, okay. <laughs> and um, maybe I can do something with your hair. Uh. Shelly's looking at Natalia with that look, that makeover look. Yeah, Thaddeus like, is going to be there wide-eyed. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, uh, sure, Shelly, um, if you, if you think that there is, um, y yes, appropriate, then, um, I will, uh, follow your lead on this. Well, that couldn't hurt, and she'll, uh, take Natalia's arm and... If you're done, we can head up now. Uh, yes, let, uh, Thaddeus, um, get ready. Uh, we'll get ready, too. Ah, yes, I'm just gonna get another tea and I'll put up in the chain. No, no, I, I think, Thaddeus, you need to go upstairs right now. Okay, I guess I'll go upstairs right now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> 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 
and Natalia will <laughs> grab Thaddeus. Just, you know, just put her arm around his. We might as well all go up together. Yes, yes, together. Here, you can eat this Danish on the way home. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I'm not hungry right now. Yes, it is all that booze in this system. It uh, fills him up. Right, Thaddeus? I, I don't think the, the, I don't think I drink that much booze then. Yet, I'm still kind of early to start drinking a whole lot of booze. Yes, your te your cheeks tell a different story. Ah, uh, well, hopefully I can look presentable to you in a matter of... What time are we leaving? Let us attempt to leave in an hour. Is that acceptable, Shelly? Oh, that should be enough. Okay. Perfect. One hour, I should be presentable. Good. All right. Speaking of being presentable, I do intend to have you make more rolls for your initial impression that you make on people. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to give you option. You can decide how you want to present yourself. Um, you can always use appearance. That is always that, except in the very, very rare perverse experience. <laughs> position a situation where someone is put off by a nice appearance um, you can always use appearance you can use your credit rating if you're trying to dress smartly and expensively and project wealth you can use your education if you are trying to appear learned so you can dress in like tweeds and glasses and things like that or you could use power if you want to project a sort of bohemian or different trend setting kind of bucking the system kind of appearance. Um, now for anybody you meet they'll be they'll have proclivities towards one or the other and be put off by some too so you kinda you know if you walk into the Penhue Foundation dressed as a bohemian that might not make a great impression. Um, so that's, so I want to leave that to you. You can decide how you're going to dress and then, uh, and we'll go. Right. Shelly's going for as, um, elegant, uh, but casual elegant as she can put together from her wardrobe, mm -hmm. which is just kind of an upgrade of her normal feminine look, uh, you know, a little bit more careful with the application of the makeup and, and the hair mm -hmm. and she's going to turn to Natalia and start holding up different articles of clothing and she's really going to try to convince her to take down her ponytail and let her uh, curl her hair a bit or um, put some combs in the hair to hold it back in a different fashion. Gee, I don't think I have any uh, dressing montage music. Right. <laughs> That's fine. All right. I will make an agreement with Shelly. Either I change up my face and hair, or I wear something different. You can pick one. Um, uh, well... <clears throat> How about um, a little dress-up of the outfit and just a little touch of rouge and lipstick? Just a little bit, just something to um, brighten up your complexion in this dreary London atmosphere. Mm. I will go to my uh, wardrobe and grab some of my more um, professional clothing and we can um, make that a bit uh, fancier I guess sure sure that sounds like an excellent idea we'll see what we can put together <laughs> good and so now walk to her room so shaking her head why do I do this and grabbing an outfit before going back to Shelly's room just don't um, tart me up too much 
do I look like a tart to you? <laughs> now, there's only one correct answer to that, Natalia, she says as she starts going to work. I will say nothing as you are working on my face. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And I assume Thaddeus puts on his usual nice suit kind of thing. Yeah, and and comb his hair and of course drink some yeah. drink some whiskey and wash his face in the wash basin thing they they would have. Okay. All right. Um, the sky is a little overcast, um, and it is, of course, February, so it's chilly. Um, there is a little snow on the sidewalks and street, but n not nearly as much as there was in, uh, New York. Um, they don't get a lot of snow here. Do we need to get, um, a cab, or is this within walking distance? And about um, 15 minutes walk. Well, I'm all right with that. I'd like to take in some of the sight. Ah, uh, a walk, you see. A little fresh air wouldn't hurt. Yes, it helps with hangovers, I hear. Ah, uh, don't worry, I took care of the hangover. Sure. Are you alright with walking, Thaddeus? I think some fresh air would do us all some good. Good. Okay. Then you all do head out. And as I said, it's not that hard. The easiest way would be to uh, just proceed way and then that way. It's not really 10 feet. It's quite a bit more. Um, <laughs> I haven't actually done the scale properly. Um, it's maybe uh, a mile walk. When you arrive outside, um, the... Where the hell did that come from? Um, when you arrive outside the foundation, it's pretty obvious. It stands out from the surrounding buildings. Um, you can actually see the British Museum over there, which is also quite impressive. Um, but this building is a two-story, um, very well-appointed uh, building. It has a wall around it with um, kind of uh, iron, you know, iron grating at the top um, and an, a fine gate, which is open. Um, so open to the public, you can see that it's it's hours of operation um, to the public are eight thirty to five thirty. Um, and so you and you see at the there's a couple of uh, columns and uh, statues out front of that, that appear Egyptian. <laughs> You're not experts in. In, uh, in in that but you, it's it quite obviously evokes a an Egyptian feeling even though the building itself does not have a very it, it has a very decidedly London look um, to it and there is sort of there's a doorman standing at the top of the steps Oh. Shelly will just uh, take Thaddeus's arm. I think that uh, you would better mm, introduce yourself. Ah, uh, yes. And he'll kind of pat himself down looking for his flat. Take a little sip and put it back. Shelly, Shelly go introduce ourselves together and I mean after all how can they refuse this lucky man with the two and I'll look over at Shelly and then 
kind of look over at the top. The two prettiest ladies in London. Uh, I mm. <laughs> thank you, that is. I um, I thought he was gonna shake her head a bit and smile slightly before uh, weaving her arm in between um, Thaddeus' free one. Charming as always. <laughs> well, somebody's gotta be good with some things at some points, I guess. And, and you know, smart. And then start walking up. Okay. Um, as you approach, the doorman just kind of doffs his hat and uh, opens the door for you. Ah, thank you, good fellow. He just nods and smiles. And uh, when you walk in, uh, you are... This is not exactly um, representative, but it gives you an idea of the grandeur uh, inside. Um... The, uh, there is a an entry foyer, and there is a a man in a suit behind a desk, a rather large desk. Um, there are some chairs um, for people to sit and wait, and uh, clearly the everything of import is behind him. You see some steps off to the left going up to a second floor. Um, and he looks up from his desk and he says, Ah, oh, good morning to you. Ah, yes, it's almost afternoon. <laughs> almost. Welcome to the Penhu Foundation. Is this what I get a, a membership? I hear it's a members only place. Well, Yes, this you are in the right place, of course. Um, is this your first visit? Uh, indeed it is. It is all of ours first visit. Ah. He's going to look over to right and to the left. He says, well, you'll be wanting to speak to Mr. Kinnery then. And he... Ah, well... Well, he, well what do I, I would love to speak to this Mr. Kinnery. Says, oh, very good. Um, would you mind signing the guest register while I ring him up? And he reaches over, and um, Shelley, you actually recognize what he's ringing up is kind of a World War One field phone. Um, and he kind of cranks it, and and uh, you can almost hear the ring on the other end. And he picks up the, you know, and he, he speaks into a, a uh, into the microphone and says, uh, yes, sir, there's a, a gentleman here who wishes to a obtain a membership. He says, yes, yes, I, I will keep him entertained until you arrive. And, uh, and he hangs up. He says, Mr. Kinnery will be with you shortly. Ah. Uh. Well, so how do you suppose to entertain us until he arrives? <laughs> well, do tell me what brings you to the Foundation. Well, I heard talk about it, and there's some exclusivity, and I like to be included in exclusivity. <laughs> well, who doesn't, sir? <laughs> exactly. He, he says, I'm Roger. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I see you are... In what name did you sign? Uh, he, he would have signed his name. Okay, he says, and uh, a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Uh, Pepin, and your uh, uh, yes. and your lovely companions, of course. Welcome, oh, welcome. We're the loveliest. He says, out for a, a day of uh, taking in sights, it seems. Yes, yes, and after we're done here, I do believe we're going to see the the Empire Exposition. Oh, excellent, excellent. A good choice. Uh, and you uh. see a man emerge um, from back behind uh, 
And he comes and he has a very kind of stodgy look about him. And he kind of gives you a, a look over. He does not crack a smile. Um, but as he, he comes around, he comes around and takes the guest register and looks at the last name on it. And then he turns to you and puts his hand out. And he says, uh, welcome, Mr. Pepin. And of course, they had this one. You know, kind of gently move his rear arm away. Uh, Shelly and... Ah, yes. Thank you. Jesus. So I'm, in, I'm intrigued to learn about the, the Penhue Foundation here. Excellent. He says, I'm, I'm Thomas Kinnery. I'm the personal secretary to the director. He says, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Oh, good, good. Uh, you know, kind of look around. Is 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 this where we're gonna have a uh, discussion, or is there he more? Says, oh no 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 no. He says uh, you can come into my office. Excellent. And uh, he uh, he takes you back behind the desk. And he says, "You of course you're welcome to bring your lady friends." Ah yes. Would hate to have to leave them. Uh, he leads you into a, a side room. Um, there's a desk and a couple of chairs. It's it's not exactly set up for an interview, um, so he kind of turns his own chair around. And you can see there's a, a young man, probably in his very early 20s, um, with glasses at the other desk. And uh, he says, uh, run along and get us some tea young master smith and uh and the young man just kind of he stands up and he kind of gawks at the two of you ladies um and in he has like a large adam's apple and you see him kind of awkwardly swallow and and uh and he just says yeah, yeah, right right away sir and he uh he kind of hurries out of the room um you you uh, believe Kinnery is, is frowning at him as he goes, but it's kind of hard to tell with that huge mustache. Um, <clears throat> he says, So what questions can I answer for you? Well, let me kind of look around. I'm intrigued to know the, what, what the foundation represents, and of course, and yeah. It intrigues me and how this this place is quite grand. Uh, well, you are sitting in one of the finest establishments in London. In fact, uh, the foremost institute for uh, learning in Egypt and uh, all studies Egyptian. Says so Mr. Gavigan could uh, could probably do a better job of explaining it. But uh, we are, in fact, uh, we supply anyone interested in, in uh, Egypt with maps, uh, any kind of logistical support they might need if they're going there for the purposes of excavation or uncovering of, of uh, any artifacts. And of course, we have a very large collection which is open to members to, to view at any time, and we have many, many volumes uh, on the subject. Pretty much anything you could imagine related to Egypt. Oh, so so indeed. Those, uh, those with an interest, a uh, keen interest in the history or, or uh, treasures of Egypt will find this place to be a, a veritable treasure trove. <clears throat> oh, Thaddeus, you keep promising to take us to these exotic places. Are you finally going to make good on them? Ah, yes. Yes, uh, indeed. We are definitely going to go someplace exotic. We are indeed interested in... And he's going to look at Mr. Kim. 
We're indeed interested in your your volumes of Egyptology and the maps, of course. Well, for, um, forgive me if I um, sound a bit um, silly, but uh, this foundation was named after Sir Aubrey Penhew, correct? That is correct. You uh, you've uh, heard of the great man, have you? Indeed, I uh, I have done um, some readings. I am um, a bit of a uh, a fan of Egyptology myself. I see. More of a um a new uh, endeavor for myself. So a bit of an amateur. Yes. He's, yes. He he actually does smile a little bit, but it's it's just a crack of a smile. Yes, it. Um, I would definitely um, love to be able to learn more. Mm. Of course. Well, I dare say you'd have um, quite the library available to you here, if that's your interest. Um, Thaddeus, yeah. can you make a uh, credit rating check for me, please? Oh, yeah. That I can fully, I don't fumble like the, the first time. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. I do believe I'll push it this time if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> push your money hard. Hey. Oh, very nice. Yes. So, um, he says, if you are interested in a membership, sir, for yourself and your friends, he says, the, 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 it's a nominal fee to the public, he says, but uh, I suspect that the, the basic membership is a bit below your station. Uh, perhaps you would like to consider becoming a, a true patron. Uh, uh, yes. Well, that that I take in what this place has to offer, that is definitely a, on the table. He says, I suspect, uh, and you're American, are you? <laughs> Interesting. Yes. He says, I suspect Mr. Gavigan would like to meet you personally. Ah, well, I would love to meet him personally, if he's available. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he'll make time. He, uh, he likes to speak to all the people of quality himself. He, he leaves the general public to me to handle. <laughs> and he he kind of smiles again you think um, uh, um and his his boy comes in with uh, a tray of of tea and some biscuits um it is not very expertly laid out but uh in fact he clearly frowns this time and he says <sighs> Go and find something to keep yourself busy. And the poor lad kind of uh, goes and, and steps out of the door after blushing. Mm. He says, uh, to be young. He says, yes, well, I might, might I uh, leave these here with you and I will go speak to, with Mr. Gavigan and uh, see if he has, has a moment to slip you in. Ah. Uh. That would be most excellent. Excellent. Um, he, of course, pours your tea for you first, and then he exits the room. They just kind of look around. Oh, see? Things are going great, and I'm of quality. And he'll take out his flask and pour some whiskey <laughs> in his tea. And mm -hmm. put his flask. See? Yes, you have many, many qualities. Um... So, how direct are we going to be about what we're looking for? Um, I don't think being that direct would be the best idea, considering we don't know how he's connected with the cult. Mm, exactly. Do you want to present ourselves as uh, looking to possibly go on an expedition to Egypt? Ooh. Have we heard of the Carlisle expedition perhaps they're just I don't know uh, people I who were interested in it 
Yeah. It was in the papers. Exactly. Yes. It can't be that um, unusual. In fact, we could present ourselves as amateurs and be aloof, but yet want to follow in the footsteps and to see what happened to the the fabled expedition. That's good. I just wanted to be on the same page. So, act them. Here's the plan. Yes. Kind of in the way. And he opens, he'll take his flask and try to pour everybody some whiskey in their tea. I feel like we need to be acting the, the American way. Uh, maybe you do connect the American way. I prefer not. But I will take some in my tea. Thank you. And now you're doing the American thing here. It's not coffee. It's tea, but it still works. The flavors kind of are unique. There is a light knock on the door. And a moment later, Mr. Kinnery returns. He says, you're in luck. Mr. Gavigan would love to meet you if you'll come this way. Ah, excellent. Daddy, so drink down his tea as quick and sit on the cup. He leads you across the hall and into a very well-appointed waiting room with several chairs. Um, and he knocks on a door at the, the opposite side. And uh, you hear, come in. And uh, he opens the door and ushers you in. And you find yourself in a very well-appointed office. It's, it's extremely um, impressive. Uh, fine, fine quality everything. It has some English or some uh, Egyptian touches. There are a few, you know, little tchotchke kinds of things uh, about. But really, the overwhelming impression is one of of very stately English uh, appointment. And the man behind the desk r uh, rises and comes around to meet you and shake your hand and introduces himself as Edward Gavigan. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. He says, Mr. Pepin from America. How interesting. And he says, Thomas, there's not enough chairs for all three. Why don't you go bring one from the waiting room and uh, fetch us some tea, why don't you? And Tom Kinnery kind of, of, of course. And he, uh, he steps out and uh, brings a chair in from the outside to make three. There were only two in here. And arranges them so that you can sit facing him across the desk and, uh, and then goes out. Edward uh, says, please, please, a seat, a seat. And he helps um, Shelly to sit down. Uh, she thanks him and sits down. He says, I'm delighted, delighted. Um, and then I assume Thaddeus seats Natalia or not? Uh, yes, he would do the gentlemanly thing. Okay. Uh, thank you, Thaddeus. All right. And then he goes around and sits down at his desk and he says, uh, Thomas said you're interested in uh, perhaps becoming a, at least a member, if not a uh, supporter of the Foundation. Uh, yes, he did bring that up when I was asking about membership. I do like the ex exclusivity of things. <laughs> However, b before I go ahead and for my thrill of support behind being a patron. I'd, of course, like to see what it all has to offer and, and of course, for my interest. Well, of course you would. You know, I, uh, I don't recognize you. I assume this is your first visit. Ah, uh, yes, it is, it, it is indeed. Yes, I'm sure I'd remember you. He says, um, well, I'd be delighted to give you a tour of the grounds and uh, show you our collection and so forth. 
and uh, answer any questions you might have in the in the meantime. Ah, well, that would be splendid. Yeah, he'll look over, and you know, as he says it to the Shelley and Tyler, it'd be such a great idea. Oh, of course, I would love that. Well, oh, I'd love to see all you've collected. Excellent, excellent. Well, then why don't we uh, go? And as you do that, you see uh, Thomas coming in with a tray of tea and biscuits, this time much better laid out. And uh, Ed and Mr. Gavigan just says, uh, uh, you can dispense with that, Kinnery. We're going to uh, take a walk around. And you see Thomas kind of frown and take the tray back. Um, and uh, Gavigan starts starts giving you a tour about. Um, so generally speaking, the lower level is all study areas, um, books, um, and other areas that are probably janitorial and so on. The second floor is really where the collection is. Um, there are study individual study rooms up there, um, and a l very large open room with uh, lined with glass cases containing um, various artifacts from Egypt. Um, so, as you're walking along and talking, you're you're seeing all of this. It's it is very nicely um, presented. Uh, you're not overwhelmed by the huge volume of things. They seem to go for quantity or quality rather than quantity. Um, except the books, there are volumes upon volumes in in uh, bookshelves. Um, but it's very quiet in here. There's there's really only a couple of other people you run into. Um, what he he says, but he starts off. Um, so I'm intrigued that you, that you've come over uh, over the pond to see us. He says, we don't honestly get very many Americans. Um, <laughs> he says, least of all Americans uh, seriously interested in the foundation. He says, I'm, I'm curious uh, how you heard about us. Uh, well, it's interesting that you should say that. Uh, you know, being young and and inquisitive as we are, we, we, we actually feel like following in the footsteps of a of an expedition. We heard about it in papers and in the hopes of doing better and Oh, would that be the Clive and, expedition? That's... Uh no, that would be the the Carlisle what? expedition. Ah. Ah. So fascinating that uh and so mysterious. Ah, the Carlisle expedition. Yes, not one of the finer moments in our history, I'm afraid. And he kind of smiles regretfully. Well, everything should be made up for at some point, don't you agree? I Failures agree. turn into successes. I agree. We all have opportunity to learn from our mistakes. He says, and I, I do hope you don't literally mean you want to follow in their footsteps, as I assume you know they did not have a very promising ending. Well, we, we do intend to, to follow the expedition in a way, but hopefully not exactly their, their footsteps to their doom. Is it true that no one from the expedition returned? I'm afraid it is, Mum. Even the uh, even their many bearers were torn to pieces, butchered. Very gruesome. Oh end. my! Well, with any luck, we could turn that failure into a gleaming success story. <laughs> what? Do, where do you think they went wrong? <laughs> he smiles. He says. When going to a foreign land, one always runs the risk of setting foot where one shouldn't. With all the best intentions, of course. 
by all accounts, they had no idea that they were trespassing on some sacred ground of some primitive tribe, and uh, they unfortunately paid for that mistake with their lives. It happens, though thankfully, not frequently. Well, hopefully we can learn from that lesson and, and not repeat it. He says, I it am seems... curious what you mean by you wish to carry on. Or what, what were the words you used? You wanted to complete the ex complete what they intended to set out to do, or something of that nature. I'm curious what you mean well, by that. Not, not necessarily complete, but more following the footsteps. In, in yes, that's the word you used. Yes. See, it, it 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 is a when you when you think about it, an interesting thing that happened to them in a way, sad but interesting. However, I feel like that if to be repeated, it'd be more of a successful story than a failure of death, right? I mean, after all, the the people that were involved were were hung, in It'd be more of a sightseeing tour at at that point, but I it is an intriguing tour. I see. It does seem that finding some reliable local contacts would be uh, very important if we were to avoid offending, as that expedition did. Well, that is did. exactly the sort of service that uh, the Foundation provides. We uh, have ex yeah, extensive only... contacts in that area of the world to uh, assist in uh, ensuring that that, <laughs> that that there's success and safety for all involved. Ah, yes, not only that, but the maps and, of course, legends to be looked at and artifacts maybe to be found. Well, always one hopes to uh, uncover the artifacts, the treasures of the past that enlighten us all. Yes, um, it it is interesting. Um, they did not um, really say exactly what they were what they were searching for. Um, I'm not sure, of course, you being more of um, I guess uh, kind of on the the inside a little bit. Um, did you happen to maybe know what um, Sir Audrey Penhew was? looking for i know it was not um king solomon's treasures but there was something else <laughs> he said ah yes that old rumor yes that's yes i'm afraid that's all uh very dime novel <laughs> he said no no it was much more mundane he said it is actually a, a very un unfortunate story he said it is not widely oh. known to the public however and really only known to the members or, or really to the uh, to the true supporters, the patrons of the foundation. So I'm afraid I really can't discuss that and unless you were to become a patron. Um, ah, indeed. And uh, he he's showing you the study. He says we have very well appointed study rooms. He's been, he's also been sort of in infusing the whole discussion with pointing out things as you're you know walking through and uh, at this point he's going to show you the the nice uh, the uh, the uh, private study rooms uh, where you can where uh, members of the foundation can can basically check out rare books or or actually artifacts themselves and uh, and take them into a private room and study them, uh, and you know take any notes or drawings that they'd like, um, and then return them when they're finished. And he he opens the door to show you one by example, and seems rather surprised to see that there is a young lady um, sitting in the sitting in the room, and she sort of turns and. Uh, you know, just naturally kind of looks back over her shoulder to see who's intruding. Um, 
and uh, Gavigan says, uh, Miss Hull, sorry to interrupt you. Um, and when he says that, um, Shelley, you and this young lady's eyes kind of lock and you both sort of look at each other curiously for a moment. Does she look familiar to she me? She looks vaguely familiar, though you're having trouble placing where you've seen her before. And uh, uh, Shelley will cock her head to one side. I'm sorry, you look somewhat familiar. We haven't met, have we? I don't believe so. Um, it's no trouble at all, Mr. Gavigan. Who are these? He says, oh, uh, they're uh, Americans come f come over the sea to uh, to visit London, and they've decided to stop in and visit our foundation. Uh, Mr. Pepin here is considering uh, becoming a, f a, uh, a member, perhaps even a patron. And uh, he says, oh, forgive me, I must... Uh, introduce you. He says, uh, this is uh, Alice Hall. She's uh, one of our patrons. Well, the daughter of one of our patrons, late patrons. And he it's a pleasure. smiles. This is Thaddeus Pepin and his two lovely companions. I, I uh. don't believe I caught your names, he says, the two of you. Ah, I'm Shelley Franken. Um, it's lovely to make your acquaintance, Miss. Uh, Natalia Vaskovia. It is also nice to meet you, officially. She gives a slight smile. A pleasure. Um looking between you two and then her eyes resting on Thaddeus. Um, two lovely ladies indeed. Uh, um, she's just kind of looking at you very strange. The loveliest of ladies. And tell me, what are your interests in the Penhu Foundation? Well, I think I was explaining to Mr. Gavigan that we intend on taking an exotic trip to Egypt and following up the footsteps of the Carlisle expedition. More of a fascination than anything else. Hmm. Looking between the three of you again and um, then looking back down towards her book and the notes that she was working on. I fear your expedition may end quite the same as the Carlisle. Oh, and why is that? There are just certain things about you. Um, and she kind of looks up from her book at that moment. That remind me of Mr. Carlisle. Huh. Well, see, we do have the benefit of learning from past mistakes. Gavigan smiles with a very exaggerated smile at this point. And uh, he says, oh, 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 very interesting. Um, he said, I'm sure you have uh, things to study, Miss Hall. And uh, Mr. Pepin, we have a tour to complete. Of course. Uh, it was a pleasure. Yes, I, I do hope to meet your acquaintance here. If I become a patron, that would be quite experienceful, I'm sure. Yes, yes. Yes, if you do join, I'm, you'll you'll see her around quite a bit. It's rather a bit of a gadfly, yeah. Gadfly. <laughs> and he says, well, I'll leave you to the studies, Miss Hall. And he, he kind of ushers you out of the room. Uh, Shelly kind of drags her feet a little bit. Uh, I'll, I look forward to speaking to you further. Um, as we do, I think we will probably pursue membership here, Miss Hall. 
Of course. Um, it was a pleasure. I'm sure we'll be meeting again soon. Ah, yes. Plenty of opportunities to gab, I'm sure. Yes, definitely to, um, as you say, uh, gab. As you guys are leaving, um, Alice is just going to have a very quizzical look as she's watching Shelly go. How odd. Yes, Miss uh, Gavigan closes the door behind you all when you go out, and he just kind of gives a little chuckle, and, and he says, uh, Delightful girl, really. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure there's many of them that come through here. Oh. This is a vast place of some knowledge. Uh, not ladies, uh, no. <laughs> and mm, she seemed to know a bit about the Carlisle expedition. Yes, yes. Well, her father is one of the one of the original supporters of the foundation. Was a friend of Penhew's. Oh. Oh yes. That's quite inter interesting. Yes, I suppose it is interesting. He, uh, yes. Uh, maybe we should continue with the tour. That is, and she'll kind of um, slyly give him a little bit of a push. Well, I'll glance over to Edward and mm -hmm. basically just like a shut up. <laughs> yes. Look. He. Uh, as he's as you're doing that, he's walking away, and he just kind of dismissively raises a hand. He says, "I said," he says, "I suppose it's only natural that the only surviving child of a great archaeologist would uh, would like to play the part or attempt to." <laughs> yes, quite understandable, I would think. I'm sorry, what? Quite understandable, I would think. In any case. Um, there are, it, should you join, you'll find many uh, serious Egyptologists here, high qualifications. I'd be very happy to put you uh, in touch with any number of them. Uh, yes, we would like that for sure. And, uh, and then he continues on showing you things. Um, at this point, he's um, he's just showing stuff and not really asking any questions. Do you have any more things you want to bring up? Only if they run across anything that looks kind of dark, you know, that would be re mm -hmm. related to their re Related to what? Their readings, anything that looked ah, like... Okay. You know, a shadow um, pharaoh you, or a you dark can pharaoh. Each or... Attempt a Cthulhu mythos roll then. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Shelly. No. <laughs> no. None of none nope. of you notice anything that stands out as odd or, you know, um, suspicious like that it to your eyes everything looks quite legitimate um and it you know it is an impressive collection as i said it's not a huge one um but the pieces they have are quite impressive and um well preserved and of course they have tons and tons of books to show um, but there's not really much to look at there he just kind of points to the volume of them <laughs> and then moves on um, so he he winds up the tour back at his office and says, uh, "Is there any uh, anything else I can answer for you, or are you prepared to uh, to talk about uh, where to go now?" Well, I, did, I think the only thing left for you to answer: How do I go about becoming a, a patron of the Penhu well, Foundation? It's, it's, very simple, an initial check uh, in any reasonable amount will immediately secure you uh, a membership and uh, 
and any benefits are negotiable at that point. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> how how much we are is a reasonable amount? Well, that's rather for uh, you to decide. I wouldn't presume to tell you what you felt is reasonable. Did we have patrons who give anywhere from 500 pounds annually to a handful of our truly wealthy and, and well-meaning patrons give upwards of, of 10,000 pounds a year? Uh, well... Far be it for me to only give a small penance of something that has a greater good. I will join those elite few that give a few tens of thousands of dollars uh, annually. Uh, pounds, sir, but <laughs> but the meaning is well taken. Uh, yes, well, you have to forgive me. So, and then Thaddeus is going to think about the, the, you know, of course, the currency rate and everything like that and uh <laughs> how's this number sound you know write it down and pass it over and it'll be you know a good like eleven thousand pounds annually oh or dollars that, annually whatever yeah, it's the to. conversion rate is about five dollars to a pound all right so yes and of course that that would be in pounds, I guess. That would be what the currency is here. That's that's an he says that's an extremely generous amount, sir. Uh, and he puts his hand on and he says, "I'm very pleased to welcome you to the foundation." He says, and uh, he says, "This is a good year to join. This will be 25 years since our founding in April." 25 years, you say. He says, I hope you'll still and be in London at that time to enjoy it. It's going to be uh, quite an extravaganza. Well, I will make it a point to try to be here. Excellent, excellent. Um, he says, Thomas can, of course, uh, take care of you in any way you require. Anything you need, if you uh, do decide you want to plan that little expedition or even vacation... Egypt, I'd be very happy to assist in any way. Because I'm Excellent. at, I'm well, at your personal disposal. I do intend to go like a hog and wallow through some of the information. He, he, his eyebrows twist just a little at that expression, but he, uh, he keeps a stoic face and, uh, and says, well, I, I wish I, uh, I wish you well. I'll enter your name in the rolls, and you'll be welcome here any time of uh, any time during our normal operating hours. And of course, if you need to make any special arrangements, just mention it, and I'll see that it's taken care of. Excellent. And he says, "Of course, you're this welcome to bring any companions again, especially ones as delightful as these." Ah, yes, well, these two lovely ladies. Smile. These two lovely oh. ladies would love to get right into there, I'm sure. Yes, uh, I am very excited to um, hear all about this uh, Egypt stuff. It uh, is so interesting. And so in vogue. He, he, yes. You detect just the faintest little smirk when you say Egypt stuff. Um, his his face is rather stony, but he can't quite help himself. <laughs> Do you suppose the expedition will have anything interesting? Which e expedition would that be? I'm sorry, the exposition, oh, the, the expo. expo. Yes. Oh, of course. In fact, um, we contributed a few pieces to the uh, Egypt section. I highly recommend uh, it. Yes, we would definitely have to take a look when we go through there. Oh, absolutely. Well, I do thank you for the tour and 
I'm sure we'll have questions and would like to set up stuff later. Right. Great now. I expect to see a great like deal to... of you, sir. And he puts his hand out to shake it. Daddy's, of course, shake it again. I suppose there's no objection to us uh, being another go through now. Oh, no, please feel free to wander about. Ah, excellent. If you need any assistance, there, you did notice there are a couple of um, uniformed guards on duty. Um, he says, you can just uh, mention to either of uh, our guards and they can uh, summon either myself or Thomas uh, to assist you. Ah, excellent. Well then, un until we, we meet again, I bid you adieu. A great pleasure. Until we meet again. <laughs> yeah, I'll look over to his right and left. But shall we go and pursue some greater knowledge of this Egyptian thing that they have here? Yes, I'd like to learn about pyramids. Things that are shaped in little trapezoids. I yeah. like triangles. <laughs> I hear the sand is really yeah. good. It's not coarse and rough and irritating. No one just gets everywhere. Yes. We'll get to ride camel. Yeah. I hear yeah. they spit. Yes. I hear they store water if you can drink out of them. Yes, all you gotta do is insert a tap, I hear, right into the hump. <laughs> Alright. So you uh, return to the to the uh, museum section. Well, where should we start? Should we start at the one of the supporters' children, or should we go to some other section first? I think we should maybe talk to that uh, Miss Hall. Um, it does seem that. Uh, Mr. Gavigan did not want us talking with her. I do not trust the man. I would like to speak with her further. Well, then that is the, the way we shall go. No doubt that somebody will be watching, so just be mindful. Of course. Okay. So it appears you make your way up to the... Uh, to that section. There is an attendant on duty up that uh, kind of loiters around that section. Um, and the, right. the room and the, the door is still where you left it. Um, give me one moment. Um, Natalia will actually kind of split off in the group and mm -hmm. go to the attendant to try and ask uh, very inane questions and have them help her. Uh, make an appearance check for me, please. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, I'm gonna give you a bonus die because because uh, Shelley oh, okay. spent so much time helping you make oh. up. Um. Um, so yeah, he is initially quite responsive and uh, very patient with your questions. Um, mm. Make a, an intelligence roll for me to see how well you come up okay. with inane questions. Ironically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's... He, he eventually... It doesn't take very long. He says, is there something specific I can help you with, ma'am? Ah, yes, actually. Um, something that I would uh, really um, enjoy reading on is, um, let's see, uh, what is it? Um, basically, uh, Prominent religions um, within Egypt, um, especially in kind of um, if there's anything uh, that very much sticks out um, in today's uh, day and age, um, thing that have um, become more prominent now. Yeah, he he's something. He, yeah. 
Islam, perhaps? Yes. Yes, that. Oh, he says, yes, we, we have a number of tomes you could look at. Um, oh, wonderful. Can you show me? I. Uh... He says it, it's for members only, I'm afraid. Oh. He says, have you spoken with Mr. Kennery about a membership? Oh, uh, we have indeed. Um, and she kind of, I'm, I'm guessing at the time. Uh, my companion, who I am with, um, I think he might be in the washroom right now. Um, I'm, I'm just mostly uh, wandering around right now. Um, just trying to find that information beforehand. I think this is what he wants to research. I'm not quite yes, sure. I see. I kind of forgot what you told me. Uh, of course. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I suppose I could direct you to a book or two. Um, something that's, that's, uh, that you wouldn't need a private room for. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, yes, he, he says we, we do have a rather lovely illuminated copy of the Koran, uh, but that would require a private room. Um, so he takes you to one of the library rooms and, and starts showing you things. So looks like you, you are sort of off keeping him busy while they slipped in to talk to Alice. All mm. right. So um, it, it sounds like Thaddeus and Shelley are going to take a moment, an opportune moment to slip into the study room where Miss Hall is located. So... Indeed. So yes, Alice, yes. you are <laughs> there reading, uh, and I, from the sounds of it, you are kind of getting ready to pack up a bit. In fact, she looks like she's getting her things together um, when you come in the room kind of quickly and uh, close the door quietly, but, uh, but also a little hurriedly, and I would, I would assume Alice picks up on that little odd motion there. <laughs> Yeah, she looks at you both curiously. Um, it's a pleasure to see you again so soon. Mm, yes. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like a moment of your time without Mr. Gavigan and... I find that's agreeable. Well, let's be seated then. Um, once again, I'm Shelley Franken, and this is Mr. Pepin. Um, are you quite certain that we don't know each other or haven't met or run into one another? You do look vaguely familiar. Um, have you been in London for very long? Not long at all. Have you been to America? I have not. Hmm. Could I... Maybe this will sound foolish, but can I um, venture, I guess, as to the direction of your studies here. Well, if your guess is Egypt, then I would say you're most likely correct. I was thinking more specifically. Have you ever read anything about the Black Pharaoh? Nefrenka? Yes, I, I'm familiar. Um, my father did quite a bit of work and research into trying to find... Shelley looks over at Thaddeus. Well... He did look into it. What, what do you think he found? Do you think... Anything interesting? I'm sorry. Um, what is your interest in Nefrenkar? 
Did you simply hear of him from the Carlisle expedition? Well, that would be one source. But, you know, as far as the Black Pharaohs go and stuff, it seems to be something that keeps popping up. And, of course, that drives our interest even more. I mean, you know, kind of look around. This is a place that would have such information, I would assume, but at the same time, one that does not have as much time as some others would have trouble digging and finding out. So finding out the first hand, some first-hand knowledge would be fruitful in our endeavors. Unfortunately, the Penyu Foundation doesn't have much information about the Black Pharaoh, nor are there any substantial accounts of his reign, if he was even real. Most people believe that he was not, and um, what, circles, what circles you belong to, and that his name keeps popping up. But here, most people find it a bit foolhardy that I'm looking so deeply into it. <laughs> of course they would. But, however, I don't think it's quite foolhardy. In fact, I would like to know what you would, what you know about it. Well, I've been doing quite a lot of research. I'm trying to continue my father's work. But it is my father's work, and I'm not quite so interested in sharing it with a wealthy American who might be seeking to just simply make his own name, much like Mr. Carlyle. Well, isn't, isn't it what we do? Try to make a name? I mean, of course, with all the respect of your father for researching stuff and you of course I mean it, it, it takes a lot for sometimes a, a man to make their name in this type of stuff isn't that correct including a team as um, ambitious as women as you and I might be it often takes financial backing to accomplish our goal and what do you desire for your financial backing to what does it entitle you to Mr. Carlyle it seemed um, by all means that I could discern seemed to simply be interested in his own name and I believe that if he had been successful we'd never would have heard of the rest of his crew or their contributions, or their contributions would be severely understated. I do not want that for my father's work, and I will not accept that for my father's work. Ah, uh, yes. Well, of course, any help that is given, of course, whether it be from you or your father's research, you know, to me, it's, it's not about my name being out there. My name is... It's quite already in a few places. In fact, I could give you a card, and it could be here now, too, as well. That is as far as I'm concerned with it. Um, however, if it brings your father into light, your father's research, and, of course, makes you into the light and makes you more, I guess I could say, taken seriously, that would be more of what I would want. Mr. Pepin plays a role quite well of the wealthy gentleman out for the next adventure, but I assure you his interests are much more serious than that appearance might be lie. Everybody must play a part, Miss Hall.
she kind of sits there thinking for a moment, um, tapping the desk with her finger as she does so. How much do you know about Nefenka? Not as much as you. And in fact, I would assume, I would just say, if you, if, if you are going to disclose anything, disclose it as if I don't know anything. Well, as you're seemingly aware, Nefren Kaur, um is also known by the name of the Black Pharaoh. He was believed to rule Egypt just before Sneferu, um, the, forced, the first pharaoh of the fourth dynasty, um, around 2613 BC. There's not a lot of evidence to support his existence. Um, it's difficult to find anything, really. That's largely why I'm searching to try to find some hidden clues or secrets to perhaps um, lead me to a place where more information might be found. But he said to have gotten his name as a result of a terrible pact that he made with the dark gods of Egypt. Um, he had to sacrifice many humans so that he might use a pyramid of some sort to see into the future, or at least that's what legend says. Um, by some interpretations, and frankly, many of the terp interpretations I've seen of the iconography and the hieroglyphics in Snifera's tomb, um, Nefrenkar was ended by Sneferu himself, who rose to the throne of Egypt afterwards. Um, it's all highly subjective, however, and as I've said before, many of my colleagues don't believe it to be much of anything at all. Well, by my experience, if they do not believe in the same thing you do, and take that seriously, that they're not much, much of your colleagues then, are you? Right. Colleagues in the business sense of other Egyptologists, not necessarily colleagues that I work directly with. I generally do my own research and keep to myself. It is difficult for our women with serious minds to have those minds taken seriously. Um, I understand that better than you would think, as does my companion, uh, Natalia. I, I think she would like to speak to you as well. Maybe we could uh, arrange to meet sometime uh, in the future. Indeed, that would be an excellent idea. In fact, you know, look over at Alice and what are you doing tomorrow? More of this and she kind of gestures around her at the library. Just research. I could that... make time if you wanted to meet somewhere. Excellent. Well, we are staying at the Ritz and I think it would be of best if we met at the Ritz. Where should I meet you in the Ritz? Ah, well, all you have to do is, you know, go through his pocket and pull, pull out a card and go to it. I'm available there most time of the day. And then, you know, whenever you're free, just come come find us. And we would like to sit down and hear what you have to say. And, of course, I'll tell you now, we will take you more serious than your, any hold-up quotations, your colleagues. She takes your card slowly and kind of looks down at it. Um, has she heard of Thaddeus at all? Uh, highly, highly. How far does my money unlikely. travel? Um, <laughs> okay, was, that's what I figured. Um, Thaddeus, make a credit rating roll for me. If you get an extreme success, she has heard of you. 
Oh man. Do or There's die. Can... A lot of nothing writing on this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is Thaddeus' good name is riding on this. No. Oh my god. No. You absolutely <laughs> Twice. have not heard of him before. The, the name okay. means nothing to you. Though it sound, it can, sounds can I push that? English. No, there'd really be no nothing to push. <laughs> there, there's nothing you could really do to push it. It's just she either has or hasn't. Um, so. Very well. Um, it's half your money if you fail. I suppose I'll I'll arrive around noon. Um, I'm quite interested in hearing more about you as well. Ah, yes, noon noon sounds like a very good time. In fact, I think we could take some lunch into one of our rooms, and the th the four of us will have that meeting. We could have room service, in fact. <laughs> yes. Well, so may call it lunch. It was, I'm sure it'll be my breakfast. At and, the Ritz, uh, it can be whatever you want. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, any time of day. Or night, for that Yes, matter. cater. Cater to our needs. Well, however, but yes, we would be most interested in meeting with you. Very well. Then, good day, and I will see you tomorrow. And she begins packing her stuff up. This yes. is going to sound very strange, and I apologize. Um, I think I've realized where you look familiar. Um, really? It, it, it will sound silly, but... I had a dream. Um, About the Black Pharaoh? Yes. I feel like you or someone who looked very much like you was standing beside me um, as I stood in front of him. I'm not normally one to buy into these experiences, but I have to say I had the same impression. Really? Blue-eyed mummy. Well, wearing no. the pharaoh's regalia. I think I just became much more interested in our conversation tomorrow then. Yes. It's disturbing, but interesting, beyond a doubt. Yes. Shelly, I'd like you to make a sanity check for me, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Like a rack. Yes. I, that indicates to me that you are still thinking it's a coincidence. A strange one, but it must just be a coincidence. Of or, sorts. you know, she's worked yeah. with Tesla. Yeah. Yes. Maybe just brain waves on the same right. level. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Very curious, but more more interesting than disturbing. Goodbye, Miss. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. She's she's gonna have her stuff packed and is gonna grab the bag from the side of the desk and standing up. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Um, good afternoon. And she'll go and walk out the door. Well. Shelly says, turning to Thaddeus, that was interesting. Indeed. You guys are sharing dreams? Apparently. Well, that's quite interesting. And, like, 
almost unexplainable. Oh, there's many things that we don't yet know how to explain, but I don't believe in the unexplainable. Uh, yes, indeed. You kind of look around. Hmm, should we find where to tell you want, or do you want to wander around and look at something? Oh, I think we need to find Natalia. This is something she'll want to hear about. Oh, well, hopefully we can find her. He'll start looking around, kind of in the direction she would have went, and she'll be good luck. Mm, yes. If they pass someone, she'll... Have you seen a, a rather tall, blonde woman? Oh, yes. She's in a library suffering under the administrations of the attendant who's trying to... Uh, tr trying to meet her many demands. <laughs> um, and so I assume you... you extract yourselves um, from that, from the foundation. Is that a correct assumption? Mm. Okay. Yes. Then I'm going to call it here um, as it is approaching the hour. Mm. Mm -hmm. So. All right.